Hi guys, a, another little box of goodies arrived for me today, this time from West Wind Miniatures. Scruffy Crow. Ah! Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got in here. Uh, so what I ordered was this uh, Evil Dwarf on Dragon and uh, this little mech pilot. Uh, and Westwind were kind enough uh, to throw in some extra little bits and pieces for me, including uh, a Queen Victoria holding a, a very large gun. Queen Vic with gun. Uh, she's pretty cool. And this Cirque du Noir Ape Man. Uh, to me, he looks very sort of Jacqueline Hyde almost. I quite like that. It's pretty cool. Piece of a choice of hats. And they threw in a Empire of the Dead catalogue, which I believe is where these two models came from. Let's have a look. So I've, I've had a flick through some of their ranges before. This is from their Dwarf Wars range. They've got a pretty nice mammoth that I kind of like the look of. Uh, that I might pick up from these guys as well for my dwarves. Uh, but I, I've also seen they have a weird war range, which is where the little uh, mech pilot's from. Uh, but I've not seen, but I've not really looked into this stuff because I've never had any reason for sort of Victoriana style stuff. But one thing caught my eye in here. These guys, these guys look like they definitely make a good Mordheim warband. They've certainly got that look about them. I mean, apart from the pistols, maybe. Might be a fairly minor conversion. Pretty sweet werewolves here. Some bobbies. These are definitely very nice looking miniatures. It's been a while since I had my hand on a physical catalogue for anything as well, which is pretty cool. Another thing model that caught my eye uh, was this one. So what's he, number 30? Mechanica Bat. That is a sweet model. It's got a nice design to it, I think. Okay, I've just had a power cut, uh, which is not ideal. So my light has gone off. Uh, but suffice to say, even by meager daylight, the models in this catalog are pretty sweet. Um, I don't currently have any use for Victoriana stuff. Uh, but just seeing these models is making me want to put something together and do a bit of a layout. So, yeah, go and check them out at Westwind. Um, and I'll come back and do the next bit of the video uh, when my lights all come back on. I will also add that I am a big steampunk fan, and these models do remind me, uh, especially the more sort of steampunky ones, uh, remind me of a series of books. I do not recall the name of right now. Well, that's somewhat annoying. Um, I can't even look up which books I mean because the 4G appears to have been knocked out as part of this power cut as well. I've reverted to my battery-powered uh, photo light so I can keep making this video. It's not like I can do anything else, like watch TV or play Xbox. Uh, let's have a look at some of these models. Start with the little pilot here. This guy was just a little add-on to my order because uh, I was kind of curious about how their uh, sort of weird war range looked. Now I don't actually have any of my uh, bolt action or conflict stuff to hand right now. Just looking at it at first glance, he appears to be about the right scale. The head looks about right. Uh, so that seems like a good mix so far. Use my busted old snips. I also don't have a suitable base to hand, so he's going to have to live in this one for now. Uh, all my... Uh, Spotlight and stuff either goes on uh, the little lipped warlord bases or uh, the flat uh, render ones. So it looks like the bottom of his head's going to need a little bit of file down where I snipped it off. That's screw. Yeah, devil glue in there. I said I'm just going to rest him in here for now. But he is pretty cool actually. Uh, so he's wearing like a full jumpsuit. He's got quite a modern looking gun. Um, but yeah, I think he looks. Sufficient. So here, for instance, is one of my K47 mechs. Uh, 
he hasn't got a purpose in game. I just thought, just thought he looked like a bit of fun. Uh, so I'll get him painted up, uh, and you'll see him as part of uh, when I do a bit of uh, K forty seven coverage and get this guy finished painted and stuff. Next up, let's look at Queen Vicky. Uh, one of the little freebies they sent through for me. So weirdly enough, I already have a Queen Victoria towing a large gun, uh, which like everything else, I can't lay my hands on right now. But um, that was more of an older Queen Victoria. This looks like a slightly younger uh, version of. Tighten what seems to be a big old machine gun. If it bleeds, I can kill it. The detail is nice and crisp. Yeah, all in all, quite an interesting little figure. She will uh, have a place in my little time traveling uh, warband uh, that includes such figures as uh, Doctor Who. Malcolm Re Reynolds, Indigo Montoya, Machete, and Marty McFly. So these are from um, Studio Miniatures and Heresy and Cottlestone. And she fits in perfectly well as a, as a short woman. Now this guy, this guy is awesome. Once again, the details are very crisp. You can see all the hairs down his arm there. That's a strap he's got going on. Oh, it's uh, uh, some braces. Going down to his ripped trousers. And his gorilla face. We appear to have a sort of choice of hats here. Either this sort of large one, or a much smaller, um, I might say, sort of comical, comical one. I think this is for his head anyway. But I think I'm going to put the, the big one on for a full sort of Jacqueline Hyde thing. It's going to take a little bit of work to take the uh, join out of there. One thing I'm noticing is these models are made out of a very stiff uh, metal, which I quite like actually. I hate when things are always bending and moving on me. So I'm going to do him a nice cobblestone base using my base print in a second and I'll get him put together. Uh, and we'll see what he looks like with a little drop of paint on I think before the end of this video. Okay, so this was the reason I bought... So this was the reason that I picked this up. I saw this guy in someone else's Warlords of Aeron video. Can't remember exactly what the name of the person was, but I'll link it in the description. Uh, I might even show you a screenshot here. So yeah, this is a sort of dark dwarf on dragon. Now he is a lovely dwarf, and if you are interested, he does fit in quite well with these abyssal dwarves from um, Mantic. He's got quite a similar sort of stature and style to his um, shape and everything. Uh, however, I don't really need these, and I certainly don't need him. So, I actually wanted this for the dragon. I've been looking around for quite an old hammer style dragon um, to be a sort of opponent in Oathmark. Now technically this guy is more of a wyvern I think, which you might call it, or a worm. Because he doesn't have four legs, he's only got the two front wings, two back legs. He does have a sort of reins around his face, but that appears to be the only sort of non-wild dragon parts on him. I've got to be honest and say this isn't the best casting I've ever seen. The detail on, on most of the bits is very nice. I apologise for the car alarm by the way. Uh, the details on these bits is very nice, um, but some of the casting parts, so we've got round the edge of the dragon there, and under there is a little bit rough. It's going to take some work to sort of file that clear. Um, and then on the back of this leg, there's clearly been a bit of a gap in the mould. Um, so where this leg should sort of fit onto this pin, uh, there's actually a lot of metal that's going to need clearing up to get in there. But I'm not complaining because for a nice big dragon uh, this size, he was quite cheap. Okay, so I've cleaned these guys up and thrown a little highlight on them and they are looking pretty sweet. Uh, but we'll look at those in a second. 
So I've got the dragon all stuck together. So the only pin required, um, and I absolutely messed it up, uh, was through the back of his leg here, uh, because that bit was all cogged up, if you remember. Uh, but I've cleared all that out, um, and I've stuck everything else on, pretty much without any pins. I had a bit of a, a time trying to work out exactly how the wings would go, so that we'd still be able to sit flat. I think if you had him rested up on something, you'd have a little bit few more options. Um, what I actually looked at was a little video of a bat crawling along the floor to try and really get the pose to work. Because they've got similar sort of claw wing legs. Uh, I also carved off the reins off his face. So there's a few little rough bits on his face. Um, so right now I'm going to go around with my green stuff and there's a few bits that I'm going to have to fill in uh, because of the model and a few bits I'm going to have to fill in because of me. So his face, so that's all me, so any fix that I do there um, is my own choice. However, so I didn't, I noticed this before, this guy, this side has a long sort of mouth part sort of where it joins on. Also, yeah, you need some glue to the front of the back of here because there's no back of his head, but I might have put them together wrong. Um, here it just sort of ends in a bit of a blob, so I don't know if that's purposeful or if that's a bit of a miscast, but I will copy this side onto this side. But yeah, other than that, we're going to green stuff his wing joints here. Um, and we're going to green stuff where his legs attach, if it's there. And in there, though on the outside, that's actually kind of covered by his wing, uh, so you won't see it too badly. So one thing I really do like about this guy is that they cast the whole body in one piece, uh, so I'm not trying to keep this tail held on, uh, which I th I've used for you know, similar models with long tails like this. That is always the bit that's the most annoying that always keeps falling off. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate that this bit's all one piece. Okay, so that's the bulk of the green stuff done. I still haven't done it on top of his face, but I've tried to match that side to sort of this side. Uh, but it needs a little bit more work, uh, but I can't do much more on it until it's all dried a little bit. Um, but we've done all these shoulders, I'm quite happy with the way they've come out um, underneath, which you're not really going to see so much. Uh, but I've tried to sort of match the textures off the, the metal parts, uh, the back legs, and actually they've kind of disappeared, I think. I'm not sure you'll notice those joints so much when it's uh, put together, when it's painted, I mean. Um, so yeah, so that's the first round done. All right, so second green stuff sesh, uh, and I've covered up all the bits where I scoured off the uh, uh, the, the reins uh, with new green stuff. And I've kind of like extended this out so it kind of matches the other side. Uh, so I'm kind of happy with that. This face all looks symmetrical. So what I've done first is got a smooth layer across everywhere I've wanted to cover, uh, using this rubber tool to get it nice and smooth and blend it all in, so we don't have any weird uh, join marks or anything. So then now I'm going to go back in with my metal tool and just for instance on his nose here, just going to copy the original pattern. And this is the bit where we stop it from looking like green stuff, just blobbed everywhere and get to look like it was part of the original model. So I'm going to go around and detail all this up. All right, the dragon has had an undercoat, starting with the grey that I used to highlight these guys and then a very shallow dusting of white on the top, uh, just to give a bit of sort of contrast between the top and the bottom. Uh, it might not even be useful. Um, but yeah, I think I'm pretty happy the way he's come out actually. As I said, you can't really see the joins um, and all the bits I've sort of cleaned up. So you can still kind of see the mold line there, but that would be kind of rough to take off without taking detail away. Uh, but yeah. This is still a really nice sized dragon. I said it did take a bit of cleaning up, uh, but I'm definitely happy with him. He compares very closely with this old uh, Citadel dragon, uh, size-wise I mean. I'm only not using this uh, for Oathmark because it's on a round base. That's the kind of scale of dragon I was looking for, uh, but a new one. I was also looking for a dragon that was, say, smaller than this one, which I also haven't painted. Uh, and like this one, uh, which is the Arkworld Forest Dragon, <laughs> He's also going to get painted green. 
So then I have, like the video that inspired this, a green and a red dragon. I think he's more than big enough uh, for, say, Oathmark, which is what I wanted him for on this uh, chariot base, or even sort of Rangers of Shadowdeep. Uh, he's big enough to give the uh, Rangers some trouble uh, and look more realistic with that sort of Witcher Forkton sort of scale, uh, rather than what I think of as a dragon being enormous. So all in all, uh, Western Miniatures have, have proved to be a quite a good uh, place to buy from. Um, the Empire of the Dead stuff um, has some absolute stunning detail and I'll definitely be having a flip through this catalogue. Um, I said these guys on the first page if I ever need to do more time again. But there's certainly some very interesting minis in here uh, that I've got my eye on. I'll be doing some K47 videos soon, uh, so this guy will be in some of those and I might even have a look at a few more Westwind's uh, Weird War stuff for that and there'll be another video at some point soon with my dragon. As I said very happy with my purchases here uh, and thank you to Westwind Miniatures, uh, link will be in the description. Ah! And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments, uh, maybe subscribe for more and as ever thanks for watching, bye!